so far we have uh, dealt with systems that are well behaved like so we have discussed so far well behaved systems like ideal gases ideal solutions etc okay as long as we are in uh, in the limits of uh, dilute solutions okay or low concentration of solutes okay for low concentration of solutes in in solutions they behave ideally and we don't need to worry we no need to worry okay but there are a certain uh, type of molecules there are for which okay so for which we need to consider uh, some special things like so for example if we consider electrolyte solutions so we know electrolyte solutions they contain ions right and they behave non ideally in the solutions they behave non non ideally okay so we get non ideal solutions even if the concentration of the solute is is low okay so usually we get non ideal solution and we need to consider we need to consider activity and activity coefficients right okay now we will see that we see that the activity is used to describe the correction to the chemical potential. Okay, when a compound is not pure. Okay, so we need to consider. We know this equation, but in in some different way. Okay, like. Okay, so here we know where mu i naught is the chemical potential or standard chemical potential and a i is the activity. Okay. So, when a solution is is, is ideal one for ideal solution activity of the solvent if we say that is a s is just equal 
to equal to its mole fraction. Okay, that we know. Okay, but for dilute solute, for dilute solute, okay, activity AI we can write as mole fraction, and the, we can consider the mole fraction of solvent is X S and mole fraction of solute is X I. Now, so we need to as, 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 as we know now that we need to really consider activity coefficients for uh, electrolyte solutions. Okay. So, for electrolyte solutions, so we will now discuss activity coefficients of electrolyte solutions. Okay, so, we will start our discussion or we will begin with we will begin we will begin the discussion of non ideality in electrolyte solutions solutions okay and for that we define activity coefficients okay so let us consider so, let us consider an electrolyte which when one mole of it is dissolved in water. consider nu plus moles of positive ions with charge z plus and nu minus moles of negative ions with charge z minus are produced. Okay. For example, for example, okay, if we dissolve Na2SO4 so, Na2SO4 produces or for Na2SO4, suppose if we if we dissolve Na2SO4 in water, if we dissolve Na2SO4 in water, we get we have nu plus equals to 2. Get, we get two number of sodium ion and the charge of each sodium ion is plus 1 and we get 1 so 4 2 minus ion. So, nu minus is 1 and the charge of the anion is minus 2 right. Okay. So, if n moles of 
this electrolyte. In mole of this electrolyte is dissolved in water, suppose then the contribution of contribution of the solute to gives free energy of the entire solution is we can write G minus G s is, is n mu is nothing but n times mu plus times mu plus plus mu minus time mu minus okay where mu plus and mu minus are the chemical potentials of the positive and negative ions respectively right and g s is the a solvent gives free energy gives free energy g s is the gives free energy of the solvent of the solvent. Okay. So, we can write or because the effects of positive and negative ions are difficult to separate so the mean we need to consider mean ionic chemical potential and we define this by mu plus minus okay, is mu is mu plus minus equals to nu plus times mu plus plus nu times mu equals to nu times mu plus minus equals to nu plus times mu plus times uh, nu minus times mu minus okay where nu is nothing but the total number of ions produced okay. and this is nothing but nu plus plus nu minus. Okay. So, it is as I said it is very difficult to separate the effect of positive and negative ions. So, we consider a mean ionic chemical potential we define this one as mu plus minus and it can be 
written like nu times mu plus minus equals to mu plus times nu plus times plus mu minus times nu minus okay where nu is nu plus plus nu minus okay so we can write the chemical potential of the solute of the solute that is contribution from both positive and negative ions it is nothing but mu you can write mu naught plus R T L N A and we can write this as nu times nu plus minus naught plus R T L N A plus minus where A plus minus is the mean ionic activity. Mean ionic activity of the solute. Okay. And it is related to the activity A like by A equals to A plus minus to the nu. So, we can or we are, so we are able to write the chemical potential separately for the positive and the negative ions. Have so then write mu is nothing but nu plus times mu plus naught but plus R T L N A plus plus nu minus times nu minus naught plus R T L N A minus right. So, in, in the above expression, in this expression A plus where A plus and A minus are the activities of the positive and negative ions respectively. Okay. Now, we see that mean mean ionic activity okay. We get like this, right? A plus minus to the new equals to A plus to the new times A minus to the new. Okay. So to quantify the the concentration of
electrolyte solutions it is convenient to use the molality rather than mole fraction to use to use the molality the molality rather than mole fraction Okay. Now, what we will do? We will discuss about de Weyhoeckel limiting laws and then how to calculate ionic strength. Okay. So, next we consider de Weyhoeckel limiting law. Okay. So, what is this law says? So, the expression for de Weyhoeckel limiting law is log is log gamma plus minus equals to minus z plus times z minus mod of this times a root over i, where a is a constant term and the value of a is 0 0.509 for water at, at, at 298 k for water at 298 K temperature. So, the value of A is 0 0.509 for water at 298 K temperature, 298 Kelvin temperature okay. and gamma plus minus is mean activity coefficient. I is ion extent of the solution. And z plus and z minus are the charge of cation and anion respectively. Okay. So, what de Weyhoeckel theory does? It relates. So, de Weyhoeckel theory, de Weyhoeckel limiting law, it limiting law relates the total ionic strength which is just a measure of how ionic the solution is and the concentration of a particular ion pair of interest to the average or mean average activity coefficient for the ion pair. Okay. 
Okay. So, and there are some limitations of de Bayeux limiting law. Okay. The limitations number one limitation is it is applicable for ions. Okay. So, it is applicable for electrolyte solutions. Okay. Second approximation. Okay. Molecules that are not charged that are not charged have an activity limitations these are all limitations or approximations ok. These are all limitations or these are all limitations or approximations for uh, de Bayeux limiting law. So, molecules that are not charged not charged have an activity coefficient of 1 ok. Third one is the charges that appear in the equation are only are only those of the salt we are calculating the activity coefficient for. Okay, so, there are some limitations or approximations of de Bayeux limiting law like the, it is applicable for ions only means for electrolyte solutions and the second, second approximations as a second approximation is molecules that are not charged have an activity coefficient of 1 and the charges that appear in the equation are only those of the salt we are calculating the activity coefficients for. Okay. And uh, th this is applicable uh, for dilute solutions. Okay, no, uh, so, okay. so there is a, there is deviation of uh, de Bayeux limiting law uh, uh, when the concentration is, is is high. Now, what is ionic strength? So, and how do we calculate it? Okay, so calculation of ionic strength. So, ionic strength we define by I. We define by I, okay. and it is a, it is it is a measure of measure of the amount of ions present okay. and the formula for ion strength is half times sum over i m i j i to the 2. Okay. Now, here we consider or in some books you will find that the that the that the unit of ionic strength is in, in molar unit okay and in other and few other books you will find that okay ionic strength is unitless okay 
So, here we consider we we consider ionic strength is calculated from concentrations relative to the standard state. standard state or we consider 1 molal. So, in or we consider that I is unitless. So, there is no unit of ionic strength we consider here. Now, how do we calculate ionic strength? Okay. Suppose, we have an aqueous, we have an aqueous solution of NaCl sodium chloride. Okay, and for that we consider that okay, so this uh, the concentration is 100 millimolal. Okay, this is the concentration of the solution. Now, how do we calculate the ionic strength of this 100 mm solution? Okay, so ionic strength I. is half times concentration of sodium ion times charge of sodium ion plus 1 to the 2 plus half concentration of chloride ion times charge of chloride ion times to the 2. Okay. So, half and what is the concentration of sodium ion here? 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 100 millimolar, 100 millimolar we consider times 1 plus half times 0 0.1 times 1. So, this gives you 0 0.1. So, this is the ionic strength of 100 mm uh, sodium chloride solution. Now, we will consider one more uh, complicated little bit complicated example. Okay. Now, we consider consider hundred mm aqueous MgCl2 solution, aqueous magnesium chloride solution. So, when you dissolve MgCl2 in water, it gives Mg2 plus plus 2 Cl minus. Okay. So, concentration of Mg2 plus is 0.1 m right. Charge. Okay. So, Z Mg2 plus is plus 2 concentration of chloride ion. So, 1 mole MgCl2 solution when you dissolve in water, it produces 2 mole of chloride ion. 
So, the concentration of chloride ion is 0 0.2 m. Right? Yes. And charge of chloride ion is minus 1. So, what is the ionic strength of MgCl2 solution? So, this is half times Mg concentration of Mg2 plus times charge of Mg2 plus to the 2 plus half concentration of chloride ion okay, times charge of chloride ion to the 2. Okay. So, you get I equals to half times 0 0.1 times 2 to the 2 plus half times 0 0.2 times minus 1 to the 2. So, you get I is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1. So, the ionic strength of 100 mm aqueous Mg Cl 2 solution is 0 0.2. 3. Okay. Okay. Now, if we plot, so from de Bajuquel theory we know, from de Bajuquel limiting law, we know we know log gamma plus minus log equals to minus mod of z plus times z minus times a root over of ion extent. Okay. So, if we plot log gamma plus minus versus root over i, what we get? We, we should get a straight line okay, like this up to certain concentration. Okay. So, this is suppose this is for NaCl solution. for MgCl2, we get like oops, for MgCl2, you get something like. So, this is for MgCl2 and you can get this kind of plot for M G S O 4. Okay. So, for a particular ionic strength, okay, so the slope of this curve depends on this factor mod of z plus times z minus times a, a is a constant term. So, for M G S O 4, z plus times z minus gives you 4 and you have the minus sign. So, you get uh, much uh, the decrease of uh, log gamma plus minus as you increase the concentration or as you increase the ionic strength, this is much faster right compared to M G C L 2 for which the G mod of z plus times z minus is 2 and for N S A L uh, it is it is uh, only one. Okay, so that's how you get different slope for different uh, ionic solutions. Thank you.